Thursday morning. It's August 12th, 2021. We're switching to Thursdays for these science updates and generally reducing the amount of time we spend making these videos. Consistent with my long time message that life is short and I don't want to spend it all on YouTube. So there you have it. Today's post, as expected by most of you, I would imagine, focuses on the IPCC major assessment, which is just due out. And I have not read the major assessment. There hasn't been enough time passed for me to read it, for one thing. I doubt there's enough time in my life for me to read the whole thing. So I'm going to draw from what I think is one of the most reliable of the corporate media outlets, the BBC. Links to pretty much everything I mention and then some are going to be posted at guymcpherson.com at Nature Bats Last. So if you're watching this on video and you want to get to the source, head on over to guymcpherson.com and start clicking some links. This from the BBC, August 9th, 2021. The headline reads, Climate Change. IPCC report is code red for humanity. That's fairly clear. The subhead, human activity is changing the climate in unprecedented and sometimes irreversible ways, a major UN report has said. Think about that for a minute. Sometimes irreversible ways. Now, climate change is either irreversible or it's not. It's either reversible or it's not. So, interestingly, the IPCC itself admitted in their September 2019 special report on the oceans and cryosphere that due to the overheating of the ocean, climate change is irreversible. We'll continue to see right up until the better end corporate media outlets saying things like, sometimes irreversible ways, when in fact, it's irreversible at this point. Climate change is absolutely irreversible. It has been for years. Indeed, I noted some 65 self-reinforcing feedback loops, any one, one of which indicates that climate change is irreversible. Those are all rooted in the peer-reviewed literature or major government assessments, and they're posted at guymcpherson.com. Now, skip down to the third line. No, sorry, the second line in this paper in BBC, the report is a code red for humanity, says the UN chief. The UN chief is Antonio Guterres, and need I point out that he said in September of 2018, we had until 2020 to fix this mess. So at that point we had 15 months, and now apparently we have a little more time, always a little more time. Despite warnings that go back more than a century, we always have a little more time to fix the unfixable. Scientists say a catastrophe can be avoided if the world acts. Really? Scientists have been sounding warnings for more than a century, and the relevant actions have not been taken. So I really don't think this is going to do the trick. Even if it says code red in the headlines, I still don't think we can overcome aerosol masking effect at least 65 self-reinforcing feedback loops and most notably an overheated ocean. I don't think we're going to overcome that. All the way down to paragraph 4 now, there is hope that deep cuts in emissions of greenhouse gases could stabilize rising temperatures. The more likely outcome? Deep cuts in emissions of greenhouse gases would be associated with reductions in industrial activity, thereby causing loss of aerosol masking and leading to a stunningly rapid rate of increase in the global average temperature. If you want all life to go on to go extinct as quickly as possible, start reducing industrial activity. Instead, this report, and I'm sure at least 99% of the others from the corporate media, indicate that you and I need to be reducing our emissions, and that will somehow save the day. I don't think so. UN Secretary General, again, Antonio Guterres, said, quote, If we combine forces now, we can avert climate catastrophe. But as today's report makes clear, there is no time for delay and no room for excuses. I count on government leaders and all stakeholders to ensure COP26 is a success. As a side note, I'm sure it will be a public relations success. So, 
going to have that going for it. Otherwise, it's going to be an unmitigated disaster, just like every one of the 25 cops before it. Just like every scientist who has sounded an, an alarm for genera literally generations. It's going to be an unmitigated disaster. This is the human condition, folks. I'm not happy to tell you, but surely you've noticed at this point, if you're older than the age of nine. The release of this report comes less than three months before a key climate summit in Glasgow, noticed, noted as COP26, a conference of parties, the 26th version. Yes, 26 times now they will have met and, and, and not, have, not have done anything except have a conference of parties and a big party. And finally, skimming down to the next paragraph, in strong, confident tones, the IPCC's document says, quote, it is unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, oceans, and land. To which I can only reply, duh, how stupid do you think we are? No need to answer that. Now, interestingly, the report indicates that since 1970, global surface temperatures have risen faster than in any 50-year period over the last 2,000 years, and almost certainly in the period since humans have been on this planet. The key points, according to this BBC paper from the IPCC, are one, Global surface temperature was 1.09 C higher in the decade between 2011 to 2020 than between 1850 and 1900. So let's tack on an additional 0.2 C to take us back to the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, 1750. So now we're at 1.29 degrees Celsius above the 1750 baseline. 1.29 degrees Celsius. Doesn't sound like a big number. It's a huge number. Remember, it was the advisory group on greenhouse gases comprised of three entities, one of which is the United Nations, that concluded in their final year in existence, in their October of 1990 report, that we cannot cross the one degree Celsius mark. And here we are, admitting to 1.29 degrees Celsius. Also, Climate speaker and writer David Spratt said in October of 2014 that 0.5 degrees Celsius triggered a bunch of self-reinforcing feedback loops that are already underway. As I indicated previously, I've identified 65 such self-reinforcing feedback loops, and I stopped counting more than five years ago. All of this tells me one thing. Okay, it tells me two things. One, climate change is irreversible and not just some of the time, as indicated by this BBC report. And two, we're screwed. And then they go on to talk about the rate of sea level rise and the certainty with which we can conclude that humans drove this increase in greenhouse gases as if that's some sort of groundbreaking development. All right, a significant part of this BBC report has this really nice, pretty picture here. It says, can temperature rise be kept below 1.5 degrees C? Seems pretty unlikely to me, since we passed that mark more than six years ago by any reasonable accounting. 1.5, no, we're not gonna stay below 1.5 degrees C above the 1750 baseline. We've triggered too many self-reinforcing feedback loops already. And we're already past that point. It's just a matter of simple math mathematics. The authors believe that of the major synthetic report by the IPCC that 1.5 C will be reached by 2040 in all scenarios. You damn right it will, because it's already there. We already passed, we blew through 1.5 C a long time ago. And there's no going back short of the mere reflection project. All right, onward we go. 
says Dr. Friedrich Otto from the University of Oxford in the UK in one of the IPCC's reports authors, we will see even more intense and more frequent heat waves. Yes, we certainly will, because we're a lot closer to 2 than we are to 1.5, and all the lies in the world are, are unable to overcome the reality of the situation. According to the BBC, while this report is more clear and confident about the downsides to warming, the scientists are more hopeful that if we can cut global emissions in half by 2030 and reach net zero by the middle of this century, we can halt and possibly reverse the rise in temperatures. No, no, and no. Ignoring the aerosol masking effect will not make it go away. Reducing emissions, cutting them in half by 2030, I don't see any problem there. Cutting them to zero by the middle of the century, I don't see a problem there because once, we, once the planet is devoid of humans, there will be no emissions to be concerned about, and that's going to happen before 2030. So, no problem meeting those targets. Another co-author from Professor Piers Forster of the University of Leeds in the UK says, quote, the thought before was that we could get increasing temperatures even after net zero. But we now expect nature to be kind to us. And if we are able to achieve net zero, we hopefully won't get any further temperature increase. And if we are able to achieve net zero greenhouse gases, we should eventually be able to reverse some of that temperature increase and get some cooling. End quote. He calls himself a scientist, and so does the BBC. And yet he ignores the aerosol mask. In fact, he ignores the 10-year lag between emissions of carbon dioxide and maximum heating associated with them. I've commented before in this space about these matters, and if you go to GuyMcPherson.com and, and put a, n a, any number of words in the search box, you're going to find out that all of this is nonsense. Anyway, five future impacts. You ready? You might want to sit down for these. One, temperatures will reach 1.5 C above the 1850 to 1900 levels by 2040 under all emission scenarios. Yes, because we're already there. The Arctic is likely to become practically ice-free in September at least once before 2050 in all scenarios assessed. Really? at least once before 2050, next year comes to mind, according to recent reports by scientists that, again, I've commented before about in this space. Item three, five, under the category five future impacts, there will be an increasing occurrence of some, some extreme events unprecedented in the historical record even at warming of 1.5 C. Yeah, as we are now observing, by the way. Four, extreme sea level events that occurred once a century in the recent past are projected to occur at least annually at more than half the tidal gauge locations by 2100. Oh, I'm sorry, are we talking about sea level rise again and its implications for human habitat? Sea level rise in 2100? I'm sure the rocks by the sea won't even be concerned. Item five, there will, likely, there will be likely increases in fire weather in many regions. You think? Have you noticed the world's on fire? And finally, back to Friedrich Otto. Quote, we are not doomed. We are not doomed. Unbelievable, Dr. Otto. I wonder if he'd be willing to have a conversation with me in which we actually stick to the evidence and talk about whether we're doomed or not. That would be a fun conversation, if only for me. Among the many peer-reviewed papers too late for consideration at COP26 is the one published two days ago titled Methane Release from Carbonate Rock Formations in the Siberian Permafrost Area During and After the 2020 Heat Wave. So a comparison of what's going on with methane release from permafrost 
in the midst of a heat wave. This from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. And also, this one is not going to make it in there, even though it's from the prestigious journal Nature Geoscience, because it just doesn't fit the narrative. The title, again from Nature Geoscience, published July 29th, 2021, Past Abrupt Changes, Tipping Points, and Cascading Impacts in the Earth System. And I'm going to read the first sentence or two from the abstract. The lead geological record shows that abrupt changes in the Earth's system can occur on timescales short enough to challenge the capacity of human societies to adapt to environmental pressures. In many cases, abrupt changes arise from slow changes in one component of the Earth's system that eventually pass a critical threshold or tipping point, after which impacts cascade through coupled climate, ecological, social systems. Look around, folks. It's already happening. Our time is drawing to a close, and I'm not happy about that, but I'm certainly not happy with the way the IPCC treats us all like idiots. They can give us a warning, say, let's say they give us a warning 20 years ago, and they did, and 25 years ago, and they did, and we didn't adhere to that warning. Do you think there might be some implications? Yeah, I think so, but apparently the IPCC doesn't think so. The IPCC is like the worst parents ever. They keep telling their children, you have to do these certain things, and the children don't do those things. So then the next year, the IPCC playing bad parent says, you got to stop doing those things. Again, I keep telling you. What, at what point are you going to take actual significant action, like, say, beating the kids? Oh, no, I didn't say that. But come on, there have been no negative impacts for most of us as a result of not taking principled actions against in, in light of climate change. We haven't reduced emissions over an appropriate time scale. We have triggered self-reinforcing feedback loops. The aerosol masking effect has been with us for a long time. We were born into this set of living arrangements, and it's totally, totally screwed for all of us. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. Any more than it's my spare microphone's fault. We were born into this. But it's time for the IPCC to stop lying and all of the authors of the IPCC to stop lying and all of the corporate media outlets to stop lying and all of the government agencies to stop lying. It's time for the lying to end. Our time is short. Let's act like it. Okay. We'll be putting out another one of these science updates probably in a week or so if all goes according to plan. Thanks for staying tuned yet again to GuyMcPherson.com and the Nature Bass Last YouTube channel.